I think like all the people before me were artists, so I'm sorry for switching the gears a little bit. But you know, I want to take you to, to December 2019. Like, what were we doing back then before COVID? Well, we were preparing for Christmas, for crazy election, and 27 people just got sick in China. Nobody took, nobody paid attention to it, right? But just one month later, China is building these huge hospitals. But you know, people still feel like Wuhan, China is too far away, so nobody cares. But back then, I was celebrating like my 10 years as a mathematician on Wall Street, and like this little alarm bell started ringing in my head. Like we did see like kind of crazy dangerous diseases before, like you know, SARS and Ebola, but they were all contained. But what if this one was not contained? Like what if there was global pandemic? Like that would do something with the market probably. So I became curious and I started like following the news and uh, studying what's happening. And you know, it amazingly turns out that like this like mathematic background is pretty good toolkit for understanding epidemics. And you know, it wasn't only me noticing it, you know, suddenly like you see like exponentials everywhere, even in New York Times. And you know, for me as a mathematician, it's like mind blown, like, like nobody care about exponentials before. And even, even more crazy, like, you know, my nerdy math friends are on TV everywhere, in mass media, and they are advising governments. And, uh, you know, this becomes like so fascinating to me. You know, how do you even explain all this mathematics to, to lay people? And I was started thinking about it. It was actually really important, like in the polarized society. So I came back kind of to my other passion, which is games. And games are awesome for explaining mathematics because like you have to think like, you know, from very simple rules, you have like very complicated behaviors. It's all about what if, like strategies, cooperation, like fights and probabilities and unknowns. It's actually very mathematical. There is even this thing called game theory, like it's a mathematical discipline. And you know, I'm not the first person who thought about like using like, games and play in education, right? So this guy certainly approves. And you know, computer games in particular would be a perfect fit for explaining the epidemic to people. And I just shared these thoughts with some friends and one of them nudged me, you know, why don't you program this? Like you can program, it's like a weekend project, so, right? Two weeks of really hard work, this happened. I shared it with my friends on Facebook and, you know, what do you have here, right? So you have like mathematical model, there is like the new cases, and you know, hospital being full, like mortality. And here is this panel, right? You can implement like all the popular government interventions like closed schools, closed pubs, closed borders. Everybody loves those. And you know, this became surprisingly like interesting and fun game, at least for some kind of people. And that kind of people told me, yeah, it's so awesome, but uh, you know, normal people will, will not get it. This is too complicated and the interface is clunky and they were kind of right. And everybody has good advice, only some people help, but there were people who help. So this is like a credits page of our, of our like real product. So it's me, uh, six developers, graphic designer, two game designers, like economists, a uh, couple of more mathematicians. And this weekend project took two more months. <laughs> and in January 2021, we had this. Uh, it's much nicer interface. You know, the game designers thought hard about how to make it more engaging. But it's like random dilemmas. Like, what if celebrity doesn't want to wear masks and small businesses struggling and, you know, problems. Uh, kind of uh, rolling out vaccines. And you know, these like dilemmas made it like really, like they brought it to the human level, right? Uh, so as I said, this was released uh, January 2021. Situation in Czech Republic by then was really bad. Like, you know, this, uh, cases were scared getting, people were tired, like they didn't want to do anything. Uh, the political situation was extremely fragile. Uh, you know, we got pretty decent media coverage. We had over 100,000 people playing it. And, you know, importantly, politicians played it. And these, like, math and their difference used this to explain to the politicians how bad the situation was. So the, thanks to this game, the opposition came together with the government a little bit. They did stuff. So math and games saving lives. That's all good. Uh, if you want to try this, it's surprisingly fun, actually. So go to this web page. You don't need to install anything. It, uh, yeah, it all runs in the browser. 
And let me, allow me, oh, one minute, awesome. Allow me to finish like with one final thought. So one thing that I realized was when people played this game and they had 30,000 people dead, virtual people, right? not real people, they felt awful. Like they felt they screwed up, like this is a bad game. But then the same thing happened in the real life and everybody was like, well, oh, government did it. Well. <laughs> and you know, I, I was thinking about this a lot. I think there is a lesson, right? I, if we want to make this like democracy think work, we need to really shift focus. We cannot think about like about decision making, like the, the government government does it, like this mindset. And no, 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 it's we people. We vote for the government, we almost voted them again. So no, it needs to be like we people own this problem, like the same way when the gamers own their own score, they care about what's happening. Okay, thank you for listening.